Now, one feature of earthquakes that is often very damaging is tsunamis. They had a huge tsunami in Japan. Now, we live uh, along the Pacific Coast here in California. Uh, what, what causes the tsunami? Why is there suddenly a huge flood that sweeps everything in its path? So when we have the type of earthquake where the seafloor actually moves, and this is what happened in Japan, the seafloor moved as one of these plates went under the other, that displaces a fair amount of water. And you, it's the same as if you, you splash in a bathtub or something. It moves in the vertical direction. You move the water vertically, and that starts this wave. And these waves travel very efficiently across the ocean, as we saw that this earthquake from Japan actually did damage, for instance, in Santa Cruz Harbor. So um, Now, on the plate moves up and spills water all over the land, does the plate always go back to its original position? Or does sometimes that water stay there and that land area remain permanently submerged? That can happen. And we saw in Japan, in the Sendai area, that the land surface went down, I think, about five feet. And that means that a certain amount of land there now is just permanently underwater that was not underwater prior to the earthquake. Was it much land or just a tiny little... Uh, um, I don't know exactly, but it's quite flat in the, in the Sendai Plain, so it's probably a fair amount of land that's now, now permanently flooded. Now, we expect earthquakes here in California. Is there any advice you can give on what people can do to be better prepared for a quake? So the thing I usually think of is to be prepared to basically camp in my house for a couple of weeks. So uh, my sister-in-law is actually from Sendai, and she has family there. And they have not gotten supplies in yet from the outside world. And so Sendai was the city in Japan the that was hardest hit by the quake. That was hardest hit by the quake. So they are basically camping in their house out of the supplies that they had prior to the earthquake. So it's really important to have enough drinkable water because you don't know that the water supply will be there for you. Uh, it's a good idea to have food for a couple of weeks and food that you're not relying on having gas and electricity to be able to cook good idea to have flash a flashlight, um, like a hand crank radio, so you can keep informed about what's going on. Lots of batteries, Lots probably. Lots of batteries, um, extra clothes, warm clothes. Uh, it's been a problem in Sendai that it's been very cold and even snowing now. So people who've lost their homes um, have found themselves um, very cold out in the snow, um, very cold in the shelters. And so it's very important to have some um, you know, warm clothes somewhere. Uh, blankets, things like that. Now one of the biggest dangers of an earthquake, one of the most common causes of injury and death is when things fall on you. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can do to reduce the likelihood that you're at home and things just fall on you? That, that's true. You can go through your home and you can look at things that might fall on you like bookcases and you can strap those things to the wall. It's a good idea to strap your water heater to the wall because that can be quite bad if your water heater rips out and falls over. Um, so it's a good idea to, before an earthquake, w look around your house at what might fall on you. And also look around your house for a place to go in case you st when you start feeling the shaking of an earthquake. And the best place to go is to find you know, a good sturdy table and just get under that good sturdy table so if things do fall, they can't injure you. And you think most Californians are sufficiently aware of these uh, issues that they would be properly prepared? Um, I would think that most Californians are aware of earthquakes, but the statistics we've seen is only about 10% of people in the Bay Area have actually made preparations mm -hmm. for the earthquake. And um, even though I show probability maps saying the probability of an earthquake, that's talking about the probability of the earthquake over the next 30 years because these earthquakes will happen. They mm -hmm. definitely will happen, and it's just a matter of when they happen. So we need to be prepared when they do happen. Okay, very good. We're going to go to the next segment of our program. I'm going to be talking to Kevin Montgomery, CEO of IntelliSense Technologies. But first, we're going to watch a short video of some of the damage done by the earthquake and tsunami in Japan. Let's go ahead and roll that tape. Very high tsunami are expected in the following areas. The Pacific coast of Aomori Prefecture. The coast of Iwate Prefecture the coast of Miyagi Prefecture, the coast of Fukushima Prefecture, the east coast of Chiba Prefecture, the eastern part of the Pacific coast of Hokkaido, the central part of the Pacific coast of Hokkaido, the coast of Ibaraki Prefecture, the coast of the Izu Islands, 
the western part of the Pacific coast of Hokkaido. The waves can be more than three meters high in some of the areas mentioned. Everyone near the coast must evacuate to higher ground. The Meteorological Agency is also warning that tsunami are expected in the following areas. The west coast of Chiba Prefecture. The coast of Kanagawa Prefecture from the entrance to Tokyo Bay to the west. The coast of Shizuoka Prefecture. The coastal areas facing Tokyo Bay. The coast of the Ogasawara Islands. The coast of Mie Prefecture south of Ise Bay. The Sea of Japan coast of Aomori Prefecture. The Pacific coast of Aichi Prefecture. The coast of Wakayama Prefecture. That was a video of some of the damage done by the recent earthquake and tsunami in Japan. And I'm now talking to Kevin Montgomery, CEO of IntelliSense Technologies, which provides a global integrated monitoring service used for managing the response to all kinds of disasters, including earthquakes. Kevin is also the director of the National Biocomputation Center at Stanford University, where his team develops advanced medical technologies for NASA, the Defense Department, the National Institutes of Health, and many other organizations. He has a PhD in computer engineering from the University of California at Santa Cruz. Kevin, welcome to the program. Thank Good you for to having have me. you today. Thanks for having me. Now, I understand that your field is disaster management. What sort of work do you do in disaster management, specifically as it uh, involves earthquakes? Well, specifically with earthquakes, what we've learned is uh, that you need to integrate a lot of information to uh, attain situational awareness of what's really going on in an area, no matter whether it's an earthquake as a disaster or any other sort of natural disaster. So uh, specifically with the case of Fukushima and the Sendai and Japanese earthquake, what we've been able to do is rapidly integrate all of the other information that exists in the world that could be of value to let people understand what's happening on the ground there and be able to make informed decisions about that. Now, when you say you integrate all this information, where do you get it from? What's your source? Uh, typically, it's a lot of different information sources that are popping up over the Internet. So, for example, to relate back to the, the previous speaker, we automatically tap the USGS uh, shake map and all of their sensors that exist worldwide. We also automatically tap the NOAA ocean buoy network worldwide, so we can actually watch the tsunami as it, as it travels across the Pacific. We can tap all kinds of different information sources that exist out over the Internet, but are, each one are, are in their own little stovepipes uh, within their organizations. What our service does is it lets you integrate all that data together to basically put all the world's data at your fingertips about any particular event. Are you involved in generating any of your own data or is it all gathering data generated by other sources? Uh, no, we also have our own sensors that we've deployed worldwide uh, that uh, sometimes you need information about a particular area and so you would like to be able to actually place a sensor there. So in the case of Japan with the Fukushima reactor issue, being able to place sensors actually on the ground there that are radiation detectors together that are integrated with weather stations so you can know which direction the winds are blowing. So we also make uh, those sensor stations and we have them deployed worldwide for problems from waterborne illness to air quality to also radiation. Now don't your sensors also detect earth movement? Uh, they can. We can also plug in any sort of other sensor also, so accelerometers and uh, other detection methods as well. So these sensors all send their information electronically, so you basically have an electronic transmitter, and on top of it you can have a sensor that looks for some particular type of thing, and Correct. then it sends it to the central source. Correct. Basically we've made a, a, a box, an electronics box, that lets us plug in pretty much any kind of sensor, weather sensors, water quality, seismic sensors, anything, and then it can transmit that data from anywhere on the planet. But what you really need to do is integrate data together from those sensors that you know about, but also everybody else's sensors too. And the idea is, again, if we integrate all of the world's data into one place and then put it at the fingertips of those that need to make rapid decisions, then it becomes a very powerful tool. Is it possible that there is so much data that it's hard to find what you want unless there's also a method of organizing it? Absolutely. That's one of our largest challenges is our service right now has over 800,000 layers of live data streaming into it right now. And you can easily become overwhelmed uh, by all that information. So that's been one of our big challenges we've been working on is to call out just those layers that are really important for, for a particular topic. 